Okay. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. And thank you for being part of our live virtual event for Ask an Expert, Get Cozy. We're just gonna jump right in and get started. So uh, thank you for joining us today. We're gonna highlight the following. We're gonna go over a little bit of housekeeping, the overview of the page, Q&A and chat functions, safety moment. That is something here at PSC. All meetings are started with a safety moment from all employees. We think it's, the, uh, it's part of our culture here. We just wanna share that with you. And we're also going to have team introductions. We all have some prizes we'll cover. Uh, we have a digital interactive wheel, which is pretty exciting. And we'll encourage you to play along as well as we have a couple poll questions during the live event. And we are gonna be discussing different uh, energy efficiency discounts and rebates for your home. There will be time at the end of the presentation to go over Q&A with today's panelists. And then at the end of the event, please look for a thank you email an after event survey. We really appreciate you filling out a survey. You can let us know uh, more programs you'd like to hear about or whether information you're interested in hearing about, how then that will help us um, better perform for future events. So again, some of the housekeeping I just wanted to cover before we do the uh, panel's introductions here. We are re requesting, if you have questions, uh, please use the Q&A chat, uh, sorry, the Q&A function uh, we will do our best to answer all questions during the live event. If we do not get to your question, we will follow up after the event directly with you. But again, please use the Q&A uh, for any questions you have for panelists or at any time during the event. And then we also have the chat function, uh, which you can use to play along for the, the digital wheel when we ask you to answer uh, what your answers are. And of course, the polling questions we're interested in learning more about you as well. So hi, I am Alana Moritz. I am an events program manager at Puget Sound Energy. Hello everyone. I am Emily Rigg and I am an energy advisor here with PSC. Hey everyone, uh, my name is Jesse Durst and I am a former uh, program manager for energy efficiency at PSC. Howdy, my name's Hunter. I'm an outreach coordinator also with PSC. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Thanks guys, why don't you take it away, Hunter? All right, well, safety is, is paramount here at PSC. And, and one of the things that we do towards that end is every gathering, every meeting, we have what we like to call a safety moment. And I like to draw upon my own personal experiences for these. And this is actually a, a story of a dear friend who had an unfortunate accident. Luckily, um, no human lives or, or uh, furry friends were, were lost in this accident, just property. Um, but as you can see in the picture, this is uh, his outbuilding on the left and a small tow behind trailer on the right. And my, my friend's a very intelligent fellow. He shared this story in hopes that this knowledge that he learned through this accident is one that we can all learn without going through this um, difficult and expensive uh, mistake that, that he made. So um, in the outbuilding to the left, my friend was using a water-based stain to make the interior wood look nice. And he's using a rag to wipe this onto the, onto the wood. And when he was done, he left those rags on a cardboard um, sheet in a pile. And the problem with that is once you soak these rags with oil, many types of oil, linseed oil, uh, a lot of stain oils, they need to off gas. And if you put them in a pile, they will actually raise in temperature to the point where they will ignite without any uh, lighter or any other form of external ignition. And it, in this case, it caused $30,000, uh, over $30,000 in damage. Um, so it got some tips for proper disposal of oily rags. Go to the next slide here. So you never want to leave rags in a pile. At the end of the day, you want to take the rags outside to dry. You can hang them or you can spread them out on the ground. You want to weigh them down so they don't blow away. Just not in a pile. Keep them away from buildings. You can also put them in a metal container with water inside. If you want to take an extra step, you can put detergent, which helps break down the oils, and screw that lid on nice and airtight. 
Um, you want to keep them in a cool place and, and out of any other form of heat, like direct sunlight or any heat sources. So be safe with oily rags. So just by attending today's event, uh, we do have a, a little prize drawing. You've been entered to win uh, one of these smart thermostats on the right here. And we'll notify through random winners after today's event um, if you are getting one of these prizes. So thanks for coming. All right, we're gonna do a little energy trivia, PSE trivia here. And I'm gonna have my uh, events manager spin the wheel and ask you some questions. If you would answer in the chat function, um, we will do our trivia here. All right, so we got, so what types of home improvements can recommended energy professionals, contractors help you with? Is it water and home heating, weatherization and insulation, uh, C, LED lighting, or D, all, all apply? Wow, you guys are really fast. I'm seeing a lot of uh, alls and, and Ds. There are a lot of attendees here. All right, let's see that answer. It is D, all apply. Good job. I think just about everybody got that right. All right, let's do it again. Spin, spin, spin. Okay, for income qualified customer, PSC customers, efficiency boost can help you upgrade your home. What energy efficiency rebates are available to help add comfort and improve your home? So weatherization, A, weatherization and insulation, B, windows, C, water and space heater, D, um, all, all apply, all of the above. Man, we got some uh, very savvy panelists here. Savvy on rebates. Let's see that answer. A lot of Ds I'm seeing. Fingers crossed. Good job, everyone, on the up and up. Okay, let's do one more time, one more trivia question. Let's get a hard one. Come on, let's go. Let's get a good one. All right, energy efficient solution. So what types of increased rebates are offered specifically for manufactured mobile homes? Is it A, home heating and furnaces like ductless heat pumps, B, home appliances, C, insulation, or D, all apply or all of the above? Let's see, I'm seeing a, a trend here with the, <laughs> the responses and uh, potential answers. Let's uh, give it another second here. Let's, let's click the answer there. Okay, D, all that apply. All right, we're gonna do, uh, thanks for answering everybody and playing a little trivia. We're gonna do a quick poll just to uh, see what folks are doing to uh, prepare their homes for colder weather. So how do you prepare your home for colder weather? I'm gonna have you answer in the poll that just popped up. Did you buy a smart thermostat or do you plan to uh, upgrade your home, house's insulation, a furnace inspected and cleaned by a professional? clean or replace filters in the furnaces or, or something else. Um, if it's something else, just send us a note in the chat as to what you're doing to prepare for winter. Impressive amount of responses. Seeing some chat replies, split heat pump system, estimate on heat pump, love it. Inspecting filters, weather stripping. Give it another, we're gonna close that poll in about 10 seconds. So give you another 10 seconds here. I think it's pretty, look like most people have finished responding to that poll. Furnace inspection. Alana, are those uh, poll results displayed already? Yes, they are. Okay, great. Mm. And remove hoses and cover faucets. That's a good one. All right. Well, thanks everybody for responding to the poll. I'm gonna now introduce our first panelist, Emily Rigg. She's an energy advisor and she's gonna go over some quick facts about heating. 
Take it away, Emily. Thank you, Hunter. Good morning, everyone. So I'm going to be going over some quick facts about heating, and then I'll provide some um, energy saving tips for winter time, and then I'll pass it to our next panelist, Jesse. Um, so to start, heating, space heating is the largest um, energy expense in the home. Typically about 45 to 50% of the home's usage is related to space heating. So it gives us a, a lot to work with, a big opportunity for savings when we're cutting heating costs, we can see a, a really big impact on the bill itself. So it's pretty important. Um, the most common home heating fuel type in the US is um, natural gas. So about 57% of homes in the US are heated with natural gas. Um, so that would be like a natural gas forced air furnace. Um, there's like natural gas boilers or tankless water heaters that provide hydronic heating. Um, and then also we can talk about electric heating, which is obviously also an option. It's a little more expensive, especially with electric resistant heat. Um, so things like baseboard heaters, cadet wall heaters, electric furnaces, um, those are typically the most expensive way to heat. And we wanna um, help with potential upgrades from those to an electric heat pump. So like an air source heat pump or um, a ductless heat pump, which also provides cooling. So we'll talk more about that. Next slide, please. Okay, so some tips for um, keeping cozy while also cutting your winter bills. Similar to what we talked about in the summertime when we're approaching a home project, we wanna think from the outside in. So starting with the, the big picture of the home, the envelope of the home, making sure it's well sealed and insulated. So adding insulation in your attic and crawl space and walls is one of the first things we encourage when you're approaching a home project. It, it shows the pretty high return on investment compared to other um, upgrades. So we wanna do that. One of the first things is insulation and similar would be um, duct sealing. If you have air ducts in your home, make sure that those are sealed properly. So um, the heat that you're paying for that you're producing is going to the right place. It's not leaking into your crawl space. We wanna make sure that is well sealed. Um, and other things, so like if you're renting maybe, um, you might not have as much opportunity for upgrades. So things like um, using heavy drapes over windows is really effective at keeping the heat in and preventing heat loss from windows. Um, things like sealing, like replacing the weather stripping around doors and windows is also great to do. Um, I myself have a, a window that ha has a big, it did have a big crack under the sill. So I, I just put caulking under there and it helps with preventing that heat loss. Um, and then really the, what we really um, encourage right away that gives you the most control that and you'll see the fastest savings is at your thermostat. So we always say, um, you know, what temperature do you have your thermostat at? Cause we wanna make sure it's no higher than 68 degrees when you're home. Um, and with COVID we've, you know, we've been heating the home more, we're home more often. So dropping it down is more challenging because we're not leaving the home as much. So that um, means that nighttime is really a uh, crucial, a, a, a really important time for savings. So trying to drop that from the 68 mark down to as close to 60 as you can. So um, yeah, at nighttime and then using heavy blankets and even like heated blankets are great because it has a lower operation cost than it would if you kept your home at, at that 68 mark at night. Um, some other things, if, if you have tall ceilings, you might notice those rooms feel colder. So spinning your ceiling fans clockwise can bring that warm air down and make you more comfortable. Um, next slide. And just some additional tips. So it sounds like most of you have replaced your furnace filters. That's great. Maintaining your equipment um, increases its efficiency and lifespan. So that's really important to do typically monthly or every other month in the winter time and place those filters. If you have baseboard heaters, um, 
make sure that those warm air registers are clean and um, that no furniture or, or drapes are blocking that. Not only is that a safety hazard, but it also obviously impacts how well the heat is able to be dispersed. Um, and if you have those, the kitchen and bath fans, um, try to limit how, how long they are on. Um, so no longer than 20 minutes, they're great. You know, they're important to remove moisture from the air, but if we see that if they're on longer, then it starts to remove heat from the home. So try to limit the amount of time those are on. And then as always, when you're shopping for new products, um, look for that Energy Star rating. So that will ensure that the equipment is high efficient. It typically has a good warranty and that's, that's the best route to go when you're shopping for new equipment. And I will now pass it on to Jesse and he can talk about some programs we have. Thank you, Emily. Yeah, so as Emily mentioned, my name is Jesse Durst and I'm formerly an energy efficiency program manager here at Puget Sound Energy and just uh, decided to help out today with this event. Um, as Emily mentioned, I'll be covering our uh, energy efficiency rebates today. Um, before we get started though, I wanted to let you know to be on the lookout for rebate changes on all of our programs as we head into 2022. Um, we are anticipating a number of changes to our rebates um, as we head into the new year. Uh, we will be announcing them um, closer to the new year um, and they'll be posted on our website on or around the first of the year. Um, so PSC offers a host of rebates on products and services that can help you when you're trying to save energy and money uh, during the heating season. Uh, first one I'd like to talk about is our $75 rebate on smart thermostats and line voltage connected th thermostats. Uh, smart thermostats work with forced air furnaces, boilers, and heat pumps, while the line voltage connected thermostats work with baseboard, wall, and radiant heating systems. So depending on what type of heating system you have, um, you'd want to go with either the, the regular smart thermostat or the line voltage connected thermostat. Um, so they can help you save uh, money basically by, by learning your habits and automatically adjusting the temperature um, to your preferred levels. So you can adjust the settings remotely using a smartphone app. So if you go out the door and you forget to turn down your thermostat, then you can just do it on your smartphone and, and take care of it there. Uh, you can also purchase, uh, so you can purchase one of the qualified smart thermostats online or go in store and submit an application. And to do that, you would visit psc.com slash thermostats. Or um, it's something really exciting we have now is a, our own PSC marketplace, which is available at psc.com slash marketplace. And then if you go there, you can save instantly on a thermostat. You don't even have to apply for the rebate. Um, so just keep an eye out on that marketplace too, because we do often have special deals, um, especially as we're heading into the holidays um, from our manufacturer partners. So just keep an eye out there. Some of the popular models uh, include the Emerson Sensi and the Google Nest smart thermostats. And then for the line voltage connected thermostats, there's the Mesa and the Sinope uh, thermostats. So uh, those are the, some of the major models. There's others out there that would qualify as well. If you're unsure what type of heating system you have, you can always contact an energy advisor to help walk you through so you can figure out what thermostat is right for you. Um, also important to note that uh, there are quantity limits on the, the uh, both types of thermostats. So uh, just make sure that you take note of that. If you're getting multiple thermostats, you're gonna wanna pay attention to the quantity limits for each type. And you also must heat your home with a PSC fuel source, either electric or natural gas. So if you're heating with um, you know, a different utility provider, then you wouldn't be eligible, unfortunately, for this rebate. Uh, moving on to the next slide. So I'm kind of split these two, uh, the heating rebates here up into two different slides. This first one is on the uh, for electric heat pumps, and the next one will be about uh, natural gas. So if you heat with natural gas, just, just hang tight. Um, it'll be just a minute through while we get through the electric portion. So heat pumps are a great way to, to improve your home's efficiency, uh, whether you're you know, using 
ductless heat pumps or air source slash forced air models. And you can take advantage of PSC's great rebates at the same time. So if you currently heat with zonal electric resistance, you could qualify for a ductless heat pump rebate. Um, ductless heat pumps, or they're sometimes called mini splits, can help cool your home efficiently in the summer, um, but also help you save on your heating bill in the winter by running in the heating mode. So PSC currently offers a ductless heat pump rebate for single family homes that heat with PSC electric and use either baseboard, cable, water, uh, wall heater, or um, electric hydronic heat system. So it's sort of like a, a water-based, um, you know, hydronic system that's electric. Uh, and if you use that for your current primary heating system, you would potentially qualify for this ductless heat pump rebate. If you, if you heat with an electric forced air furnace and you're a PSC electric customer, you might qualify for our uh, electric forced air furnace to air source heat pump conversion if you install a high efficiency air source heat pump. Um, so you, you can also install a ductless heat pump for this. There's slightly different uh, requirements in terms of efficiency, but uh, if, you, if you wanna go with a ductless heat pump to replace your forced air furnace, you might also qualify for that rebate. And then something to keep in mind is that manufactured homes and income eligible households may be eligible for higher rebate amounts. So uh, if you just go to psc.com slash heating, you can find the full program requirements and our current rebate um, for each, uh, for each uh, specific model. I'm not gonna go into the particular uh, rebates for each one just because there are some, it is fairly complicated. Um, so it, we often recommend you call an energy advisor just to get some information about your specific circumstances to get you the right, uh, the right rebate. Um, and then I think we can go on to the next slide. So moving on to natural gas heating, if you heat with natural gas currently, we do have high efficiency upgrades that can help save you both money and energy and keep you comfortable in the winter. So if you're a PSC natural gas customer, PSC uh, offers rebates for several different technologies, depending on what type of system you have, you might be eligible for somewhere between 350 and $800 in rebates. So if you heat with a natural gas boiler, you can upgrade to a high efficiency model with an AFUE rating of 95% or better. And, or if you heat with a, uh, um, if you heat with a, a forced air furnace, you can also upgrade to a, a new forced air furnace, natural gas with an AFUE rating of 95% or better and qualify for a rebate. Um, and then we also do have a natural gas integrated space and water heating rebate available for integrated systems that heat both space and water. Um, and you would use either a tankless model or a boiler-based system for that. Um, they also have to be high efficiency systems that meet our efficiency standards. So again, you'd wanna check psc.com slash heating for those details. So we encourage you to check out those rebates um, for more information. And then again, with our income eligible households, uh, they may be eligible for additional higher rebate amounts through what we call our efficiency boost program. And there's also a weatherization assistance program that can provide um, free services. Now it depends on you know, this, your particular situation as to what services you would qualify for, but that's also an option for you if you'd like to check out that weatherization assistance program at psc.com slash LIW. Um, and if you have any questions about your current primary heating system, you just wanna know like, Am I, you know, what, what type of heating system is this? I'm not quite sure. And am I, you know, is it heated with PSC, uh, PSC fuel? Um, would I qualify for the rebate? Please do contact an energy advisor, their phone number, and we'll show this again later. It's 1-800-562-1482. And you can discuss your options um, with an energy advisor. And then uh, let's go on to the next, next page here. Uh, so moving on to weatherization. So another another good, I guess, thing to, to work on if you're 
if you've already upgraded your heating system, you're looking to go for like kind of that fine, that next step to try to um, in, improve your energy use and save some money. Uh, you know, sealing and insulating your, your leaky spaces in your home can impact the comfort and the efficiency of your heating system. So you can lower your energy bills by preventing the, the heating and cooling loss through those unseen leaks and seams in your, in your home. And, and insulating that is, is important, but also air sealing uh, your home can help to prevent some of that heating loss. Uh, you can do that in the, in the attic, the floor, and the wall area, you know, using wall insulation um, to help your cooling system or your heating system work more efficiently and improve your comfort at the same time. So if you heat with PSC, electric, or natural gas, which is very important, um, in order to be qualified for these rebates, you do have to use uh, PS, a PSC fuel to heat your home. Uh, PSC does offer some pretty generous weatherization rebates that can cover up to about 50% of the cost of insulating and air sealing your home. And to get started with that, you wanna, again, call an energy advisor. Uh, their number is, again, is 1-800-562-1482 or um, you can actually request a referral to a PSC recommended energy professional. These are independent weatherization contractors uh, who can help you identify the, the best places to insulate an air seal in your home to help you save energy. Um, and you can do that yourself by visiting psc.com slash rep. Uh, you can use the referral form on there to request a referral to a recommended energy professional from PSC. And then again, for income qualified customers, you may be eligible for lower cost or no cost upgrades through either our efficiency boost or weatherization assistance program. And if you're a manufactured home customer, you may also uh, qualify for increased incentives as well. You can visit the links provided here or um, contact an energy advisor as I recommended above um, if you have any questions about your eligibility. Uh, just to note, it's, it's really important to note this with the weatherization rebates, you do have to use a PSC recommended energy professional or another qualified trade ally in order to qualify for the, the weatherization rebates. That is a requirement of that program. And then um, finally, again, just be sure to look out uh, for rebate changes uh, on all of our programs as we head into 2022. Many of our rebate offers and amounts will be changing as we head into the new year. Uh, they're not quite, quite ready to be announced yet. So those um, changes will be published on our website on or around uh, the first of the year. Okay, uh, let's go on to the next slide. And I think we're going to another poll here. So for the next poll, when do you plan to start your home, your next home upgrade? Are you currently in the research phase? Have you already started on your, your home upgrade? Um, and then do you need it since the last, have you needed it since the last heat wave? So I know over the summer we had a big uh, heat wave that kind of encouraged a lot of people to get started on some new uh, home upgrades. Or maybe is it in a few months that you're thinking that you're gonna work on on your next upgrade uh, one day in the future, you're not quite sure yet, or you know something else. Uh, some other phrase that you're in right now. Just send us a note in the chat. Maybe you're already finished with it. Sounds like some people are under research. Oh, someone's already getting a high efficiency furnace uh, on Monday. Congratulations. And someone's think sounds like someone's thinking about a tankless water heater. Okay, well let's um, let's go ahead and I don't see a lot of hopeful lot of things coming in, um, so let's end the polling here and see what we got. So it looks like most people are still in the research phase. About eleven percent have already started, um, and then eight uh, percent, you know, started thinking about it after the recent heat wave. Um, Ten percent saying maybe in a few months. Uh, Eighteen percent saying one day in the future. And then we've also got some, some notes in the chat about different types of systems that people are looking at. 
All right, so we're going to go ahead and close that um, that poll there, and let's move on to the next slide. So next, I'd just like to just sort of follow up with the on the discussion about the rebates. Um, here are some links you might find useful when investigating future upgrades in your home. Um, for more information about PSE's suite of rebates and beyond even sort of the things we talked about today, you can visit psc.com slash rebates. If you're ready to get started on an energy efficiency project and you don't need any more consultation, you can request a referral to a PSC recommended energy professional by visiting psc.com slash rep. Um, and then I'm just important to note, we did provide some links to Energy Star here Energy Star is a federal program that promotes energy efficiency and it's run by the US EPA and the Department of Energy. Um, so that's sort of an independent website we're providing here. So now I'm gonna pass the uh, conversation back over to Hunter for some Q&A. Awesome, thanks, Jesse. Yeah, thanks everybody for, for attending and just being active in participating. It's just so many. So many good questions that have been asked in the chat. And, and some of these, by the way, that are, you know, we're gonna be focusing on energy efficiency today. So some of the questions that are in the chat, I notice are outside of that, uh, the expertise that we can offer. So we'll be sure to follow up to those questions with the proper resources after um, our event. So I selected some of these to be answered live. Looks like Zoe did as well. So let's kind of start with the first one I selected. I'm thinking Emily might be a good one to answer this. On average, Emily, how much does it cost to continuously run the pilot light on a fireplace? Oh, that's a good question. Um, typically, it's about 1,000 BTUs per hour, which calculates to about um, one cent per hour. So on a monthly basis, that's about $7 typically. Cool. All right. And Zoe selected this one from Marilyn Smith. Uh, she'd like to know, I'd like to know about how to use my thermostat most efficiently. For example, if I'm leaving my house for three hours, should I turn the thermostat down a couple degrees and then bring it back up when I return? Or should I leave the thermostat as is? Is it more efficient to bring the temperature up gradually or to put it on hold temperature at that exact time I want it? Does that make sense, Emily or Jesse? Yeah, I think um, it's hard to say with, you know, if it's only a couple hours, it might become tedious to always drop it back. But in general, um, having it, yeah, I'd say if it's more, if you're gone for more than maybe five hours, that's going to be efficient to drop it down. But um, the question of is it more efficient to keep it at a steady temperature or drop it down and then have it heat back up. It is the latter that it is more efficient to um, to drop your thermostat down because the cost that occurs when you keep it at a certain temp at that high temperature is actually more than what it would cost to heat your your heating system back up. Does that answer it? Awesome. Thanks, Emily. Let's take a look here. Some other ones. Uh, I thought this might be a good one uh, for you as well, Emily, if you are willing. Marina Martin wants to know, she's replaced her cadet wall heater with a new heat pump and AC system, air conditioning system, replaced all exterior doors, light bulbs, insulated exterior faucets, added an insulation blanket to her water heater, and more. Additionally, she keeps she turns off lights when I am not in the room, um, when she is not in the room, excuse me. What more can she do to help reduce her electricity bill? Sounds like she's done a lot. Yeah, that's great. Um, did she upgrade her heating? Was that the first thing you said? Yeah, she, she said she replaced her cadet wall heater with a new heat pump and AC system. I'm guessing a ductless yeah. mini split. Okay, and did anything about water heating? She said she added an insulation blank blanket to her water heater, did light bulbs, insulated exterior faucets, and replaced exterior doors. So she's 
she said gets a gold star yeah. on that one but <laughs> anything else anything else that she can she can do that you can think of um next thing might be looking at appliances um so energy efficient like energy star rated washer dryer um kitchen appliances getting rid of any excess fridges or freezers we have that recycling program for old fridges and freezers that can cut monthly costs by five to ten dollars generally um, a month um, and depending on her water some. heater maybe considering a heat pump water heater that's the most efficient water heating you can go with and that that's generally the yeah the best water heater to to consider if your water heater is aging I might suggest air sealing as well. Um, a lot of people go to insulation, but actually air sealing could be really helpful in tightening up the home. Just make sure you have enough ventilation. Um, we have a, a network of uh, uh, recommended energy professionals that can help you make sure that you have enough ventilation in your home when you're doing air sealing. That's hey, hey, Jesse, that's an yeah. awesome idea. Mm -hmm. Air sealing sounds like fancy. That's like what? I'm like trying to conceptualize what that means. Can you put that in different terminology for our audience? Sure. Yeah, basically it's taking a can of spray foam or you know caulk um, and making sure that the, the seams and the cracks where air can, can travel you know, from your living space up into either the attic or through the crawl space into your living, living space, just to make sure that that's all tight and, and sealed up. And it's actually amazing how much of an impact that can have, even beyond insulation. You know, you you can insulate to an R49, which is, you know, a really thick bed of insulation. But if you don't air seal, uh, you know, you're still getting air moving between your house and the outside. So, so basically, we're talking about reducing draftiness and staying cozy. All right. Awesome. Uh, let's see other questions that we selected live. Oh, wow, there's a lot of good ones here. Okay, this is a good one. So wondering, an anonymous attendee wants to know, does a smart thermostat offer, a couple of people actually asked, asked different iterations of this question, does a smart thermostat offer any advantage over a programmable thermostat? Uh, they add, I have mine programmed to turn up the heat to 68 degrees for only a couple hours in the morning and the evening. I turn it up manually if I'm home early. Also, it's at 19 years old. So yeah, I, I can I can answer this. Um, I'm definitely not an expert in in the actual products of smart thermostats. I'm trying to get one myself, but I'm having some issues with the wiring. Um, but from my understanding, the difference between programmable and smart is that the smart thermostat is able to learn your habits and um, like eliminate any times when you might forget to um, set the program. And so it's just, it's kind of an ease in your mind that the smart thermostat takes care of that for you. Yeah, one of the features, so I've got a smart thermostat. One of the features it has is it, it, um, it can actually tell, like you can hook it up to your smartphone and it will tell based on proximity how, if you're in your home or if you've left your home and it will actually adjust the thermostat based on that. So there's a setting that you can do um, to, to do that. And that goes above and beyond what a sort of a programmable thermostat does. So if you tend to leave your house in the middle of the day or something and you didn't really program your thermostat to, to turn down automatically during that time, it would actually sense that you had left the house and it would, uh, it would turn down the thermostat automatically. That's one feature that, that smart thermostats have over programmable thermostats. They're really, so correct me if I'm wrong, but they're really nice for people that snowbird that leave during the winter, say in, in uh, Washington state and go somewhere warmer and you can keep tabs on your home and check in on it. Or if you have a vacation, um, condo or rental somewhere. It's a, it's a great way to be able to keep tabs on your house. Because you can just look at your smartphone and see what temperature it is and, and modify it at any time. Um, are we good on time, Alana? How much, how much more time do we have here? 
Yeah, we have time for one or two more questions. Okay, okay, cool. I'll choose carefully here. I just had one highlighted. Where did it go? Okay, this. One second here. Oh my gosh, there's so many good questions here. That's a challenging one to answer. Okay. Yeah, this this could be um, this could be a good one. It's a little it's a little convoluted. Somebody maybe Emily, you can tell me if this is a good question that you want to take. Somebody wants to know. Say, so have a well maintained train gas furnace. It's 19 years old. He's been he or she has been told that they should replace it to get something more efficient. Um, so again, that's well-maintained train gas furnace, 19 years old. With the trend to eliminating gas appliances, should I switch to an electric furnace and or an electric heat pump? Or should I stick with a, with a modern gas furnace? Is that, Emily, mm -hmm. is that a little too convoluted for our session or do you wanna comment? I can, on yeah, I can comment on it. Um, cool. Yeah. A lot so, of people are thinking about this. Right, yeah, it's a common question we get. Um, keeping in mind like carbon footprint too. And um, as a utility, we're trying to, to reduce the total um, you know, emissions that are occurring. So we're finding that the most efficient as far as moving forward goes is a combination, like a hybrid model of a heat pump with a high efficient natural gas furnace for those cold winter mornings when we're wanting to reduce the electric peak loads where we're not having to um, like outsource to more fossil fuel based electricity. We want to keep it local. And in order to do that, we can use natural gas to, to um, shave off those, those peaks that we see like on cold winter mornings, for example. Um, so it, it might be good to consider a, a heat pump with a, a new natural gas furnace. Another option is to just simply replace the natural gas with with another natural gas furnace um but yeah keeping in mind like future things with trying to move away from natural gas and use more clean electricity the heat pump plus natural gas backup is a good model awesome and so i think we got time for one more question and we had a question Okay, there's another convoluted one, but I think it's a, it's a common question. And I think probably Emily, you would correct me if I'm wrong, be a good one for this one. But we just got a question from Betty. She's 89 years old. She heats her home with a 17 year old gas furnace. She's wondering, you know, if she turns down her thermostat to 55 at night, would it be safe or, and or economic to heat just her bedroom with a freestanding electric oil filled radiant heater. So these are electric powered space heaters that are filled with a, a liquid that the electricity electric elements heat up and it kind of radiates out into the space. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I think I answered one in the chat similar to this where um, hmm. creating a warm room is really um, a great strategy and turning your furnace, your thermostat down saves quite a bit. The only thing you want to keep in mind is is limiting the amount of time that that radiant heater is on because that does start to add up. But depending on the size of your home, you might see a savings if you're just using that one heater in a small room compared to heating your whole home. Thanks, Emily. So we said, Alana, that was uh, last one. Do we want to take one, a bonus question here? Yeah, we still have people online, so let's we can do a bonus question, and then we'll wrap it up. Yeah, so this is this is a good one. I like this question. Um, Rosalie Borda wants to know. I currently use gas heat. Does heat from an electric heat pump feel less warm? Uh, she also wants to know uh, along those lines. Do you need to raise the thermostat to get the same feeling of warmth? 
you know, 63, 68 degrees with oil, gas, or electric, in her experience, don't always feel the same. I, Anybody I, want to comment on that? I might be able to comment. I don't know, Emily, if you have any comments on it, but I've got a ductless heat pump in my home, and I do notice that the, the, the way the air feels is different. Um, you know, it's, it feels more, like it doesn't feel as dry to me as when I've been in natural gas heated homes. Um, so, you know, if you're used to that really dry air coming through, which actually I've really enjoyed having uh, a, a more moderate humidity level in my house with the ductless heat pump, because I feel like my skin feels better and it's less dried out um, using the, the ductless heat pump. But yeah, it does, it does feel different. I wouldn't say it feels colder though. The, the issue I think is that when you get a really cold day, a heat pump by itself, you know, especially it's not a cold climate heat pump that's, that's made to work in really cold climates, it, it's not going to necessarily be able to keep up with the, with the cold. So it can only like do a certain differential um, between the, the temperature outside and what you want it inside. So uh, you're going to notice it on those colder days, it's not going to be able to keep up as well. And that's why oftentimes you have backup, you know, heat, either it's electric or, you know, natural gas, as Emily was discussing, um, to, to help out for those really cold days when you really need that additional, um, you know, additional boost of heat. Mm. Yeah, it's kind of long, long, more of a long distance runner, a heat pump versus a gas furnace kicks off with a lot of BTUs at that one moment in time. So it is a, it is a different feeling. But yeah, I think as Jesse can attest, a, a heat pump can certainly heat your home just as well as any other heating system that uses fossil fuels. Okay. Well, I think uh, that ends our time for question and answer today. And if you have any questions, you can contact an energy advisor and thanks for joining us. Yes, thank you everyone for joining us today. We really do appreciate it. We look for the thank you follow-up email and after event survey. Again, we really appreciate you filling that out and letting us know how we're doing, how we can improve, or if there's anything more you would like to learn from us on future live events and programs. And if you're one of the lucky three winners, we will contact you directly. Have a wonderful day. Thanks so much.